Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by BlackRifleCoffee.com. Good night. Hey. Oh, it's no, it's, mor- it's no, morning, Jim. It's not Jim. night, it's morning. <laughs> oh, is that why the sun is yeah, out there? Sun's yeah, sun's up. Sun's oh. up. So what, what, what were you thinking? Maybe the sun was confused and you were right about what time of day it was? Yes, exa- that was exactly my train of thought. <laughs> yeah, you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> oh, not a prayer. Uh, we're here with one of our favorites. You know him from Range 15. Richard, really? How are you, sir? I'm doing great, thank you. God, you're w- you're one of our favorite humans on this earth. Oh my God! Thank yeah, you. yeah. Every we loved working with you in in Range 15. Uh, obviously, Helen Keller versus Night Wolves. Oh, yeah. I don't know how many movies we've done together. And you've also had a mustache for like 80 years now. Yeah, so yeah. that's we really respect mustaches yes. more than anything in, on in this world. Although, that's our favorite mine, thing. Mine was a real mustache. I'm not quite sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, know, yeah, we, yeah. we've almost wrong. had like a steady incline of famous stashes. With, <laughs> we have. Yeah. With Steve. Steve we Lemmy had Steve Lemmy on yesterday oh, from yeah. Super Troopers. Yeah, yeah. He had a stash, not as strong as yours. And he yeah. talked about someone who had, yeah, you, you were talking about that. Somebody had to use a fake stash because they didn't have time to grow a real one. Freddie was, Mercury. Yeah, Freddie Mercury. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for right. uh, uh, Remy Malik. That should have went into yeah. his Oscar performance, you know. There should, should be an asterisk won. next yeah. year. Yeah, if you yeah, can't be like, hey. If you can't yeah. grow a real stash for Freddie Mercury, you should have right. won the Oscar, in can't my opinion. Grow, can't grow a real stash, can't sing, can't dance. You should. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really? Is that, is that guy really like that? Yes, he so can't he, sing or dance? He said that at the beginning. I don't know why. I don't know why you're offering me this role. I can't sing. I can't dance. Can't so, yeah. So all of it is uh, lip synced. Can't dance. And then um, what happened was it was Sasha Baron Cohen was supposed right. to do it for seven years. Last second, they they hated the Queen. The rest of the band shut down the script and said no because I guess it was too much about Freddie Mercury and, uh. and and AIDS. And they were like, it's about the band. It's like nobody fucking cared about the band. Yeah. Um, what was their guitar player's name? Yeah, you got me on that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't about the band. Yeah. It wasn't Sorry. about the band. It wasn't yeah. about the band. Now, so he, I, I understand their heartache because, I mean, they they played a major role in a lot of the writing oh, of yeah. that. Like, I know I know the guitarist and the drummer were huge into, eh, let's do this. Or, what do you guys think of this? And that sucks when it's just one dude is yeah. all anybody cares about. And you're like, but, but I wrote that song. <laughs> <laughs> but it was right. one of those things where... Uh, Sasha Baron Cohen had, had grown the mushroom. I mean, he was yeah. taking vocal lessons for years. Like, right. And then, no, just chucked. And then and they were like, look, you, you either do this script the way that that was, or we're going to get somebody else. And yeah. he was like, you guys can go fuck yourself. Which is amazing for him. Yeah. Um, but uh, not a lot of actors can get away with that. And then yeah. the fact that he won the Oscar after that, like, shit. Yeah. But he didn't have to learn to sing or dance or grow a real mustache. No, no he yeah. Then what did he really do? He lip synced or grow six inches. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that was crazy. Uh, was there has there anything like been a, any any movies that big that you were up for that you were like, man, that could have been me? Um, the closest one I think was was, and this is a million years ago, was uh, a phenomenon. The, the, the John Travolta, right? Yeah, John yeah. Travolta. Yeah. Where he gets the brain tumor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. A great movie. I, I, that was a great movie, yeah. Yeah, I love yeah. It. yeah it he's, spinning, he's spinning the pencil with his yeah. hands. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I got a call. I, 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 less often now, but I used to sometimes get calls. Could I come for a table read to fill in because they didn't have a character cast or something? So I, so I got a call. Would I come and read this role of the doctor in, in, in this? And uh, and so I get there, and it's it's up in um, uh, the top floor, uh, Eisner's uh, uh, room at the top of Disney. There, you got to go up past past the Seven Dwarfs, and there's this this huge table, and you know all these name cards are around it. And so I looking for my name card, and I sit there, and it's me and John Travolta and Forrest Whitaker, and I go and I wow. I go what am you know what is this? He said, well, you're reading the doctor. I said, okay. And, um, and so uh, all the other people that were there for the read were ca- were, had been cast in it. And, uh, and so afterwards, a bunch of them that I knew came up to me and said, oh, are you going to do this role next year? Are you going to do this role? I said, no, I haven't heard anything about it. And so then uh, uh, I'm getting ready to go to the elevator, and, and John Turtletop, who directed it, comes down to the elevator. He says, that was great. That was terrific. I said, well, thank you very much for the opportunity. And I, and I called my agent when I got uh, back, and I said, you know, what's going on? They said, well, they haven't cast this role yet. I said, well, you know, submit me, <laughs> you know. And, uh, and he called back, and he said, well, 
they uh, they they said, yeah, you don't have to come in. You just read the thing with the you know with the with the people. Uh, if it you know if it comes up, it it is fine. Evidently, it was out to uh, uh, Bobby Duval, and he just was taking his time making a decision. And then he decided he was going to do it. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. Robert Duvall. Yeah. That's that's a tough one, isn't it? Oh, no. It's not. <laughs> that's the whole point. I said, you know, me, Robert Duvall, come on. I, I, I put you in the same class, yeah, Richard. Yeah, not You've the... been in everything. How many movies? 300? Yeah, something like that. It Damn. is. Yeah, yeah, it is literally over 300. If you go to IMDb, it is astounding. I think it's you and Danny Trejo. Well, and who I've are done, neck and neck. I've done seven with Danny. Have you really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're 300. I, yeah, like 300 movies. Have you watched That's a very Spartan amount. Isn't it? Isn't of it? Movies. Yeah. Have you been to Danny's uh, donut shop? Ah, uh, yeah, the one uh, I've been to the one down on uh, on uh, Santa Monica. Is it good or what? I haven't. We. I don't think. Have you been? I haven't been. It's it's fine. It, what's great is 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 you know you get a, you get your donut in a little bag. It's got Danny's. Picture stamp oh, on it. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. Man. Yeah, he's become a branding machine. Yeah, um, I, I, his agent, uh, Gloria Hinjosa, she, she does a lot of it behind the scenes that you don't really see, mm-hmm. but like she's been really good about branding him because he's got that taco place. Yeah, he's got the donuts place. Right. Um, and I believe he's got a coffee coming out. Um, well, he's got the coffee with the at the donut place. Is it? Do, do they sell the bags with his face on? Yes, it? they do. They do. Yeah. So that was it. Yeah. yeah. I saw that in her office, and I was like, "Holy shit!" Yeah. Um. Yeah. He's he's doing everything. These yeah. Days. Plus, you know, plus he, he's a producer now too. He's he produces almost every movie he's in. Yeah. Yeah. And he's uh, God. He's got to be what seventy? I think he's seventy-one now, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. I think you know, I think we're the same age. Yeah. Yeah. Are you really? Yeah. Wow. You don't look seventy-one. Yeah, <laughs> had a lot of work done. <laughs> how many how many premieres have you gone to of movies you were in? Not a lot, and, and and it's not it's not necessarily by choice, but but fortunately, you know, knock wood. Usually, I'm working, and, and so I and so I can't make it. I the next one that's coming up that I I should be able to make. I hope is uh is a movie called Limbo, which is going to be at the uh, Beverly Hills Film Festival. Uh, the third of April, I think. Okay. Yeah. Right on. How many times have you played Santa? Twelve or thirteen. No way. Yeah. <laughs> thirteen Santa Claus movies. Yeah. And the only reason I know that is that is that I was doing uh, publicity for a movie called um, Bear City Two, and that was the question that they asked every single time was how many Santas have you done? And I, I why are you asking how many Santas I've done? But yeah, but, yeah. Because you, you have a very Santa-ish quality where you're like, all right. Ho, ho, ho. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no, I just, I just did one last year. Uh, we shot it up in, uh, uh, in Victoria, and, uh, and it was uh, another Talking Singing Dogs one. It's called uh, Pup Star for the Christmas Special. <laughs> <laughs> and they get Santa Claus to come and be a guest on the Christmas special. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, dogs and Christmas movies go well. I remember that's yeah. what I was always pitched. <laughs> if you could just do dogs and Christmas movies, you would crush that and Christian movies. Yeah. We were talking a little bit about this earlier right. before you came in. Are you're starring in something or, or just finished something where guys are trying to make a Christian movie? Oh, oh, yeah, no, it's uh, we're 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 it's in development now. It is okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, but, it, that's one of those things where they're always asking, "Hey, man, can we yeah. tap into this audience?" Because you can show it around the world. Oh, exactly. Were you ever in Seventh Heaven? I was. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> See, yeah. you could play this game with. Yeah, him. it yeah. is. <laughs> you can almost name every movie and be like, "Hey." Yeah, I did. I did. I did actually one episode that was that might have turned into a spinoff, and I would have been the. I was the mayor of this town that. A couple of the a couple of them come to visit and look at as, as setting up a job there it was their last season, and uh, it was it was fun. It, the the girl that lived next door to next door to me uh, had become a sort of semi regular on it. She was uh, she was uh, uh, somebody's babysitter. I can't remember. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and so is he definitely is the one that like over the last couple of years you'll be watching whatever yeah and just see him pop in and i'm like 
<laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, like you're sitting at a party waiting for him to show up. Like, where the fuck is he? And you see him always on fucking TV right now. Again. <laughs> again. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Because you, like, I, but I'm talking like old school. I remember seeing you. When I was a kid in Glory, they showed it in, yeah. my, in my history class. God, what a great fucking movie that great was. Great movie. You were amazing in it. That was, it was a really interesting experience because I, I was in New York at the time working, and I got this audition, and I went in to read for the quartermaster, and, uh, and uh, Ed, Ed Zwick essentially gave me, the, uh, gave me the role then. He said, everybody else has come in, has played him as this racist asshole, and you played him as a, as a bureaucrat. And you know, and that's what we were looking for. That's, that's actually uh, more accurate from our experience in the military. Supply guys are like the biggest. Yeah, uh, yeah <laughs> they're, they're like penny the pinchers. Yeah, but barters. Like, yeah, they bar like so. If you were trying to come get gear from me, I would give you the least amount possible. But if I'm right. going out to find gear, I steal as much <laughs> shit as I can find. That's how those guys are. Really? Yeah. Even shicer. dating all the way back then. Oh yeah, dude. Oh, that's yeah. The, oh, that, that's never a good changed. supply guy in the military is a total criminal. Well, it's, it's like it's like <laughs> no, it's just like I'm a serious. line producer. Yeah. Oh, Any, yeah, yeah. Anything, yeah. You, anything you can, you make over overage is yours. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Jeez, man. I when I saw that movie. Uh, I remember thinking I to myself, going through like, this list. What's that? I want to start going. Yeah, through yeah. This. yeah. Pull up his list. I want to find some weird shit. When I saw that movie, I I knew that that was going to win. You know, like a jillion Oscars oh, yeah. and all that other stuff. Did you know at the time? Yes, it was the most incredible script I'd ever read, and it was it was just amazing. And and the first time I read it, and then, and then when I was flying down to Savannah to shoot it, uh, reading it on the plane again, it was just it was just amazing. I couldn't I couldn't get over how good it was, and uh, and they went. Out of their way to, to make every, everything you know absolutely right. They uh, uh, they did all this research and people complained about about Matthew Broderick, but I've seen pictures of the guy. He looked exactly like 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 like, like Matthew Broderick. Yeah. Yeah. And um, and then uh, they they we shot they shot everything except the final uh, attack in Savannah, in and around Savannah, and and they were open to anything. It it snowed. For the first time in 25 years, while they were shooting, and they wrote this scene of him walking through the camp in the snow, you know, and it was just everything was it was everything was special about it, uh, and uh, uh, and they had incredible incredible cinematographer, and uh, and you know, and then the the music was amazing, and and the, and he put together a great cast, and then he hired uh, ten. Uh, African American actors that he called the the, uh, uh, the A troop, and they went and they did all of the training with the, with the principals, and they di- and they did uh, and they were always set up right around them. You wouldn't be aware necessarily of that, but so that the actors would have somebody that they could play to all the time, and not you know not just an extra you know but, really but a real actor. Yeah, and then and then it was the first movie. That hired reenactors, and they they had like four. Oh, I didn't know that they hired actual Civil War reenactors. They had four hundred reenactors did all wow. did, did all this stuff. Huh. Well, they, they come with their own costumes. They came with their own costumes, and that was, that was <laughs> the only that was the only thing because because they were and they were good about it. They weren't you know they didn't get in the way, but they were constantly saying you, you shouldn't have that's not that's the wrong button. That's yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's because they knew. I bet everything. they saved a fuckload of money doing that. Too. Oh yeah. my god! Oh, yeah. it's genius. Yeah, because yeah, it's a dream for them too. Well, yeah. exactly. And they, and they were great. I mean, they were they were there, they were camping. You know, they actually <laughs> camped out. Yeah. You know, and on, they wanted on the to. Set. They were they wanted to, to go yeah. up in a hotel. Yeah. They set up a camp. God, yeah, man. So uh, food. I'm as a producer. I'm thinking food's the only thing you paid for. Maybe some makeup here and there, but that that had to be those guys. Dream. Oh, like, it was, yeah, but it was everybody's. I mean, it was it was you know everybody that it was, everybody wanted very, so much to be part of it, and that was again the only disappointment. It it was a great film. Everybody was so excited about it, it and and it was sort of became uh, a, a, in a, in a sense this year's Oscars because Glory should have was the best picture. There's no question. Right. Not Driving Miss Daisy, but Driving Miss Daisy was more palatable. Right. Yeah, and then look, you know, you had this year's reverse driving Miss Daisy, where, yeah, that one, and it was it's essentially the same movie yeah. except a white guy's driving a black guy in this one. Yeah, did you know Denzel was going to win the Oscar for that? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Although it could have been Morgan. I mean, it, it, uh, 
both those guys were incredible all the way through it. I mean, they were just they were just so totally there all the time. And then and then the the other two, Andre Brower and Jimmy Kennedy, who made up the the four guys, were were just were incredible too. I mean, yeah, was, yeah. Andre Brower could have been nominated as well. He could have been nominated as well. Man, he was yeah. great in that movie. Yeah. Um, what was it like working with Denzel? Denzel was terrific. I didn't have too much with him. Most of my stuff was with was with uh, uh, Matthew. Yeah. Uh, uh, I had one scene, and it was the three of them, and they essentially uh, keep anybody from coming in while Matthew does his second uh, attempt to get boots. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I mean, I didn't have much direct contact with them, but but they were there all the time. Everybody was there all the time because they wanted to be part of the, part of the process. Was that one of your favorites? Looking back, like it was a it was an incredible movie to start with. I mean, that was my first major major film, and I remember uh, I, I could again I couldn't make the premiere, so I went and saw it uh, in a, in a movie theater, uh, and it was a pretty pretty full house, and it was the first time I'd ever heard myself booed when I when I came on on the, you know on the screen, <laughs> uh, you know for the second scene because they. And it was it was great. I mean, the fact that it had that much impact on, on you know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's amazing. Did you? Uh, look oh it up? yeah, yeah, yeah. Let, let's go from if we're gonna go glory, let's go in order of like import. Deuce Bigelow, male gigolo. <laughs> oh yeah, there we go. <laughs> that was a, that was an amazing film. Uh, it was it, what happened was I was uh, I was in New York doing um, Iceman Cometh, and uh, and I put myself uh, and I'd gone. To an audition and, and, and been put on tape there, and uh, I had done uh, an episode of uh, the TV show that that Rob and and Ron um, Elder, not Elder. Anyhow, they did this. They did this this TV show for a couple seasons. Jim Burroughs was was the director, and I played the, I played this guy that was uh, you know a drunk at some bar, and they come in and they're looking for the, an edge about this this game, and I, I give them this long spiel about about the uh, uh, the grass, uh, you know, this, that, and the other thing. And and they say, ah, we know we got it. And then I turn to the guy next to me and and t say something s incredibly stupid about about uh, uh, being a, a, a court of ballet dancer or something. And, uh, and, and then, of course, they bet and they lose all their money. Uh, and, uh, th and he remembered me. Rob remembered me from that, and he called me up. Uh, after I after the audition came on, he said, "You know, you look just like my dad. I really would love it if you'd come and play the dad." And so we it, it was it was kind of Rob Schneider said that. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, and so it was kind of complex. We getting getting uh, uh, out of a, a couple of performances in New York to come out and shoot uh, the first week, and then and then go back and finish Ice McCometh, and come back and finish the movie. But it was it was. Uh, such a fun movie to be on it was it was nuts it was absolutely uh, totally totally crazy i mean the, the <laughs> bathroom scene where they where they were they were they were you know putting all the noise effects in and uh and every and every uh uh story that that uh that deuce's dad tells bob bigelow tells you know, are, is just this side this side of being salacious the whole thing yeah <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> And 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 Rob, who wrote it, would kept kept cracking up, you know. So that was so it was that was it was fun to do. I had such a great time doing it. Yeah. And then Transformers: Age of Extinction. Oh boy! So you're you're talking you to a the a guy who just loves Transformers hey. Hey. life itself. Well, this was a you know I I didn't know what to expect. You know, I was going into it, and everybody, everybody said, "Oh my God, uh, you know, you know, be prepared." Uh, uh, it's, it's going to be cra craziness, and so I why thought, why is that Michael Just Bay because Michael of Bay. Michael Bay and the yeah. yeah, and he's and and it was uh, uh, for me and I you know I don't know what it was like for everyone, but for me it was like 180 de 80 degrees different. I got there and uh, there's a knock on the on the on my uh, trailer door, and it's Michael Bay and uh, and Wahlberg and they they come in and they say we got we just want to tell you how excited we are. You're doing this role. We know it's not a, a big role, but but we think you're just you know we really are happy you're doing it. You know, if there's anything. No you shit. Need, yeah. If there's anything you need, just you know, please, please let us know. Da da da. And so we get to this theater in in uh, North Chicago, and it's been and it's been closed for 40 years. 
and it's you know it's covered in dust and it's got no um it's five stories and 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 there's there's no elevators or anything and so they're dragging all this equipment in and uh and bay always wants to have a camera in his hand he's constantly he's constantly shooting something you know Oh Whether really? So he just like walks around, he walks around, with a yeah, right. Oh, that's cool. Well, shit. no, he he he, you know, he'll pick one up. They have they have all these cameras lined up with different lenses on them, so it, it's already lensed. And he says, "I want the throw." They go, "Boom!" Here it is. And and you know, and he's and he he starts and he's shooting. No DP, just himself. Oh no, he, there's a DP. He just yeah. wants to be. He's just part of it. Oh wow, that's yeah. really cool. Yeah. Oh you yeah, hear all these shitty stories about him. And, yeah, yeah, and well. The day before I, I got there, they had shut down the Dan Ryan Expressway to shoot shoot some some uh, stunt, and the whole city of Chicago was <laughs> upset with him. Oh, I know? bet yeah. that traffic going in and out of yeah. there is pretty brutal. Yeah. Uh, so the overall, the, the experience was it was a great it, it was a great experience, and, and I, like I said, they they had to haul things up. the The final scene where uh, I, I'm in the booth, looking down on on the uh, on the stage, was six stories up and they had had to haul everything up six stories of, of stairs you know that what they should have done is had the transformers move the stuff up that, for them why yeah, didn't they? i don't know like you've yeah. got these alien robots yeah why not they're use them? really strong <laughs> they're not Super they're not even robots. they're not even sacks so you don't have to pay them yeah, that but much. Also, it's just one swipe for them yeah, right yeah that's all it is exactly yeah. it would work let's I, let's call michael bay Let's get him on the horn. He's not doing anything. He called Steven Seagal the other day. Does he have did. Does he have a lens flare machine physically there with you when you're doing it? Yeah, because you know he loves those lens flares. <laughs> yeah. No, but if I... you go to craft services, it's all explosives. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how's he always doing those lens flares all the time? I don't know, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, everybody knows you, like, for, I mean, forever from office space. Mm. And that was, I mean, you're probably, what? 10, 10 years into your career at that point, 15 years? Well, it was 99. So I, I, I came out here in 89. So yeah, it was 10, 10 years since I came out to L.A. I'd been, I'd been doing theater and some little films uh, before then. But yeah, that's when I first started doing that. And any expectation when you signed on for that, that that would be no, as big it as it is? No, that it would be fun. I yeah. mean, uh, um, Mike Judge took a long time casting it, and I think I was in three times. The first time I went in, I read for uh, Tom Sparkowski and the psychiatrist, and then the next two times I just read for Tom, and um, and when the when the uh, uh, when he cast the show, he uh, he got in contact with everybody and said, "Look, we're going to Austin. It's my own town. Uh, I, we're going to have a great time. I'll show you, you know, where we uh, best places to eat, and where you know my band pl- used to play, and uh, and uh, we're going to work hard, but we're going to we're going to play hard." And and there's no, not going to be any suits around to look over our shoulders, and that's exactly what the experience was like. We got there and and it was just it was just one, uh, they, they uh, you know we all stayed in the same in the same uh, uh, hotel right on right on the river there, uh, and uh, and it was uh, and it was great. And uh, and since so many of us were involved in so many scenes, we were always hanging out together and. Uh, uh, and and it became it became just a wonderful experience so all, all in all and uh, but when it was done uh, we uh, it, we uh, we went back several times doing uh, ADR because they wanted the studio wanted to cut to cut it they said this they said this is a summer film if we can cut it to under ninety minutes we can have an extra screening blah 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 right and Michael delivered I don't know what he had delivered some some I'm sure it was great. And they said, no, we need to cut. And he was being, he was meticulous. He would try and keep every scene and just, and, you know, cut little bits uh, uh, beginning and end and, and, and yet keep the core of the scene so that he, you know, he kept his movie. And they, um, and then uh, they made him do it again after he delivered that one. And he was not happy about that. And so. I'm sure, because that dude's a genius. And then oh, I, I'm sure he's just like, hey, man, I'm still, giving you what I'm giving you. Yeah, he's, he absolutely, he's, he's, he, he really he knew he knows the stuff completely. I mean, like, and and he knows how he knows how to do it. When we um, when we began the Bob scenes where the Bobs come in and, and interview, uh, I was I was the guinea pig. I was the first one they they interviewed, and so we we did one take with with uh, uh, Paul and and John, you know, doing doing it with me. And 
and and uh, you know, and Mike said, "Okay, that, that's that's a good start." And uh, and John said, "You know, how about if we improvise a little bit?" And and Mike said, "Okay, go ahead." So about, there are about I think twenty minutes of improvisation where the two of them, you know, went went at it with me, and we went back and forth, and you know, and a lot of it was a lot of it was good. And then Mike said, "Okay, good. Now that we've got warmed up, let's do it the way it was written." And really? And that's how we <laughs> ended up doing it. <laughs> so was I'm a people person? Was yeah. that it, that was in the script? Yeah. yeah, it was. Okay. Yeah, that's funny. Let me ask you this: Are you still making residuals from the jump to conclusions, Matt? Nobody knows where the jump to conclusions Matt is. The original from the, the original. Oh shit! Yeah, some <laughs> asshole. Somebody AE swiped stole it from that thing. Set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, from Range 15, we got half our shit stolen. Yeah, a lot of it. Really? Yeah. yeah we found uh, what... Started popping up on eBay. Yeah, Randy Couture's head. Oh, wow. From that fight scene. And that was then an the, expensive And then the fake head. dick. Oh, my God. The fake dick that the got ripped off. The fake dick was seven grand, right? Oh, yeah. It was a... The expensive dick. Really, really expensive yeah. dick. Mm. Do you ever... How often do you uh, do you ever run into drinking bros out there that are uh, that that recognize you from Range 15 or anything and bring that up? Range fifteen, I, not so much. I, I don't. I, <laughs> yeah, no. the movie you were in, not at all. But no. Office Space every single day. Well, it's, well, it's yeah, it's funny because different people are like, wow, you know, they've said that's all anybody talks about when I'm in an airport or something. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And, and, but it's always something different, you know. Yeah, yeah. And, and that is that's the thing. I, uh, there was a point when I, there was a point when I was in New York when I uh, I was on the subways and on the street all the time, and people don't usually bother you i mean that, that's sort of a new york thing but i could tell that they were looking and talking about me and that so for a week i, I thought I'll, I'll do this non-scientific survey and see you know and see and it was just you know, I, I think i was still doing grounded for life then <laughs> so um so i would i, I so i i just I, I i put it all together and and it was about at that point it was still about 60 65 percent office space they recognized you from that although you know Although not always for Tom Smarkowski. Uh I, I somebody I, else. Yeah, I was at I was at a uh, 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 cigar place with, with a buddy of mine in um, in, in Beverly Hills, uh, and uh, this uh, and we we're getting ready to leave, and the manager says, "Oh, you're gonna want to stay. Sammy Hagar is coming in, and he always brings in these gorgeous women." <laughs> and, Sammy Hagar. Yeah. <laughs> and so and so and so we, we said, "Okay, we'll have another another drink," and we so we we we. We waited, and sure enough, he came in, and there was about about six really beautiful women, a couple of big guys, and uh, you know, and Sammy, and they took a table off in the corner, and they were taking care of. And so, the, and so, uh, my buddy says, "Okay, uh, we see, we see it. Let's we can leave now." And so uh, he said, "But I want to show you my humidor first. It's right underneath uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger's." And so, yeah, sure enough, Arnold Schwarzenegger. And then he opened up his and showed me what he had, and and uh, and when he turned around to leave. And three of the girls are coming in, and they're looking for the bathroom. And the one stops and says, oh, were you in office space? I said, yeah. Oh, can we get your argument? I said, sure. And we put down your line about the stapler. And I said, <laughs> uh, yeah. and I said you know, I really was in office space. That wasn't me. That was a buddy of mine, Steve Root. Uh, but I, if you still want my signature, I'd be happy to give it to you. They said, oh, yeah, of course we want your signature. And we put, you put down your, li your line about the stapler. No way. Yeah. And I said, <laughs> if you tell it to me, I'll put it down. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. At that point, you're like, fuck it. I'll, I'll do that. Where's Where's my stapler? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But yeah, but 60% of them were uh, or office space. Uh, about 10 or 15% were grounded for life. And then then it, then it was interesting. It was whatever was on late night cable or, or you know, uh, that week. So it, it could be. You know anything it could be Deuce Bigler, it could be it could be uh, 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 fugitive, uh, you know whatever. And then um, and then there was about a good five to eight percent that thought I had, had taught them in in middle school or worked at <laughs> worked somewhere down the block that they you know they went where they some deli down the block where you know. Yeah, that's hilarious. But it, but it, it's 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 true. There you know people do think they know who you are and. And how they put it together is interesting because, uh, you know, I remember, uh, you know, when people people stop sometimes for the strangest things. Uh, the Laramie, I was we were, I was in Laramie, Wyoming, shooting the Laramie Project, and there was uh, 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 
uh, uh, Josh Jackson and and uh, and uh, Kenny and and there was a bunch of people in that movie. There were tons of people in that movie that you think that you know that that people would want to talk to, and and so I saw the, this bunch of girls were at the bar and they kept looking over. And finally, they got up and they you know and they they came over and they came and they ended up coming to me and they said, "Were you in Office Space?" And I said, "Yeah." They said, "Oh." Good. Our boyfriends uh, want to come to. You're going to be here tomorrow night. Our boyfriends want to come and, and and see you. And there are all these. I said, you know who these people are around this table. You know? <laughs> yeah, but that's one of those movies, though. Like we, you know, again, like <laughs> yeah. Super Troopers. Yeah. Where it just lived forever. It still lives. Yeah. yeah. Still lives. And it's still great to this day because about. I think it's because of what it's about. Yeah. You know, working in an office and people hating their day jobs. Right. And that theme is relevant and, and probably will be until the, ro the robots take over yeah there's a, there's a lot of movies that are good in their time and i don't think there's any time that the office that office space won't be good no i can't imagine not being a good movie same because no, you super still troopers, still troopers. Yeah, younger super troopers generations way, yeah. still will go back and watch oh, yeah, yeah. Space, super yeah, troopers. The, com yeah. the comedy translates from one generation to the next that's a big deal to you yeah. And it shows over and over and over again. I mean, Jesus, it shows, it's on Comedy Central. It shows like all the time. Every two hours. It's about to have its 20th anniversary uh, this year. Are you guys going to do anything? Uh, Mike should release the full cut of the film. <laughs> yeah, I wish they would. Yeah. No, it doesn't exist. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Because it was on film and they just pitched I, it? I don't know, but they, 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 when, they, uh, when they realized that, this, that it was a big hit and, uh, and uh, DVD had just come out, they wanted they wanted to to do a you know a, a release on the DVD and they said uh, do you have any you know they asked Mike if he had any any uh, scenes uh, on you know and he said I got nothing I you got everything that I you know really yeah so and he, he didn't keep any of that whatsoever didn't keep any of that and then and then they said well will you do will you do a um, a commentary and he said no but I'll do an interview for you that's cool yeah, yeah that's not bad at all yeah. Who's your Who's your uh, favorite person you've ever worked with, actor-wise? Oh wow! There, there is there is really really so many. I mean it 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 it, it just depends. I mean, uh, that's funny. I, I you know I never I never think of that. You know I guess I guess uh, Mike Ironsides. Oh yeah. Michael yeah. Ironside, right? yeah, Starship yeah. Troopers, baby. You just oh, yeah. you just perked up Dan real quick. Yeah. I there. love Ironside; he's hilarious. I, yeah. Not even trying to be funny, he's funny. Yeah, oh no, he's great. And we we spent uh, one of the first big films I did here in terms of time uh, was uh, Free Willy. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we spent uh, Jared. You were on the cover of that, right? <laughs> <laughs> you fat fuck. <laughs> Hold me like the river <laughs> Yeah, now you go back and watch that movie. It's got so many layers now with Michael Jackson. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and the whale. Because I can't believe they had sex with that. Did you know that? They had sex with that whale afterwards. Who did? And, uh, I, b I believe it was Michael Madsen. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> he was the weirdest fit in that movie yeah. for me, where it was just like, man, he just didn't seem like he really wanted to be a dad. Yeah, I kind of sided with the kid who was the dirt bag in there. <laughs> where I was just like, man, if Michael Madsen's your dad, like, yeah, you should go fuck shit up and spray paint the whole oh, God. place. Uh, that's one of those two where, like, I, you know, I've got kids now. I've got two kids, right. and um, he, you know, was watching Free Willy the other day, and and I was like, man. There you are, you know? And uh, it's hard to tell them that you're not an asshole in real life, you know? Because <laughs> in that movie, you don't play too many assholes. A, a few here and there, yeah. Yeah, but uh, in that one, you, you were. In that one, it definitely was, Do yeah. you think it would have been funny to see Michael Madsen replaying the scene from Reservoir Dogs with Free Willy? Yeah. <laughs> like, Stuck in the middle, and he cuts off his door, dorsal fin. Dorsal fin. <laughs> <laughs> We've been on a big kick of that lately, of, uh, <laughs> rewriting movies and making them super dark. <laughs> yeah, what did good. you say before we came on about Bob Saget? Yeah, I want to do a prequel to Full House, uh, <laughs> where it's no shit. It's a young Bob Saget. He's a stand-up comedian, and you know, like especially young stand-up comedians, very internally dark. Yes, that's that's why a lot of them get into the business. So he's internally dark. Meets a woman, gets married. 
they have a couple of kids and all of a sudden he starts realizing that his life has taken a different path and he decides to fucking murder his wife. <laughs> so it's like a And then true he successfully crime. covers it up yeah. and then starts successfully full covers house. it up and that's where full house starts. <laughs> <laughs> How fucking great would Dude, that why be? don't oh. we why don't we just produce something like that that that, that Will Smith yeah, thing that just came out? Let's I was do the same thing. Let's yeah. just do the pr- the trailer. Make it shoot yeah. super <laughs> dramatic. Did you see the the Fresh Prince one? Oh yes, Somebody right. Somebody shot a dramatic yes. version How, of what it would, would be you watch like that? today. I would fucking watch it. Yeah, I'd watch it. I'd great. watch that movie too. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, it almost feels like the the next wave. I hit up that director on Twitter, mm-hmm. and I was like, "Dude, this is incredible!" And he's like, "Thanks, man. I was not expecting any of this whatsoever." Really? Yeah, because it just keeps going and yeah. going and going on YouTube and everything else. But that could be the next wave of because, like, if you're gonna remake something, why not go super dark with it? it dark, like, because you know what? I wonder if. We should look into this. I wonder if he's the same guy that did the one about the Power Rangers. Did you see the one where all the Power Rangers like like go down this super dark path? Like, no. Like, yeah, like one of them turns evil, one of them kills themselves. Like, like it's Whoa. just the first one I remember was the Mrs. Doubtfire one. Remember when they made uh, the one. dark trailer of Mrs. No. Doubtfire? Ooh. Oh, wait, I think I remember they just put like super dramatic, scary music to it, like as if and they recut it. it so was, uh, yeah, yeah, as if it was a, a guy hardcore horror film in, di- uh-huh. in, di- in disguise of an old Stalking woman, baby, his wife and children. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but just take a moment right now and think back about the plot that I just subscribed, and then think about the Full House theme song kicking on right at the end of that movie. Of of which song? So the one about Saget. Yeah. Think about like you watch this whole movie. And oh, then and then the full house. The full house theme song <laughs> kicks on right at the end and just a black screen. Ah, uh, that'd be good. <laughs> yeah, because if you shoot it with different actors and the kids are younger. Yeah. Like, and you just think yeah. this is a drama about a guy that kills his wife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, dude, <laughs> it would be great. It would be really good. I we just saw Us the other night, the new George Oh Peele yeah. Movie. Yeah. Yeah, it was terrible. Yeah, we, we didn't like it, but mm. they took that song, uh, I Got Five on it, mm-hmm. and they made that. That was really good. That yeah, it was really, really good. good. So, like, they made that really creepy in the film, and it just kind of kept sneaking up on yeah. you, where you were just like, ah, oh, shit, that was genius. Mm. Um, I read about that today. That that ended up breaking every record there was, pretty much. But do people like it? Or just, no, just you two that it got like, like it. a B minus cinema score and like people's uh, like the reaction because, you know, like deadline and all the trades like they yeah. they'll go through the numbers and then tell you what the audience thought of it afterwards. Right. So uh, it got a B minus cinema score. And then they said the end was really polarizing. Yeah. Well, uh, the B minus mm. is good enough, frankly, because Jordan Peele will now go on to a new genre and do something clever again because he's a clever guy. Is that he's, what he's yeah. doing? Is he jumping genres? Like well, he, he was all he horror. was straight up sketch comedy, and then he went to horror for that last film and this yeah. one. And he'll I guarantee you he's going to jump. Uh, this one's horror. It's I mean, horror. It's, yeah. It's, yeah. A, yeah, it's a it's a horror movie. But he, he's uh, going to go to like a psychological thriller next. Is my guess. Not horror though. Yeah, but I, I he, think he he's 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 doing the, uh, the Twilight Zone Twilight series. Zone. Yeah. yeah. See, I mean, I didn't even know that, but that would be my logical. Yeah, so, so they're they're redoing the Twilight Zone series, and they got a bunch of interesting actors that are doing that. Um, it said CBS, and then later on, I read CBS All Access. All Access, yeah, which is for their app. And I'm yeah. like, man, is is everybody going to an app? Yeah, it looks like well, it, Disney's yeah. pulling all their shit off Netflix and everywhere else and creating their own app too. Yeah, now. correct. Like, yeah, because the um, they own Fox gone. now. Yeah, yeah. All the it, Marvel stuff is fucking like in a month. I think is disappearing. Yeah. From, what's uh, what's your thoughts Netflix? on that? Um, like, because it kills residuals and everything else. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, streaming is what is what it is. I, they've they've got the, the union or somebody has got to figure out a way to to do it. They're co- you're constantly being told, well, there's no way we can determine how you know how much it was seen or you know what what percentage you know goes goes to the actors and that. So you, you're kind of you're kind of stuck with it. it it's like um, uh, it's like showcase uh, 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 contract for for uh, for theater. They're saying, oh, well, you're getting exposure. People will you'll see you and, you know, and, and use you in and And puts you in other things. And yeah. you're probably like, motherfucker, I, I've I'm been 71 years movies. old. Yeah, yeah right, exactly. <laughs> I'm good on exposure. I actually need a paycheck now at this point. Tell me about it. You really? Yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, you know, you go through the, the, the television, there's 800 apps on, yeah. on your thing. Well, and it's like, oh, even actor friends of mine who are just like, watch this on Hulu or X, right. Y, and oh, God, Z, whatever. Yeah. And I'm like. I'm not even subscribed to half that shit. I mean, the solution is obvious to me. You and people like you get together with some of your director and producer friends and make your own shit and then sell it to... Because fuck the studios now, right? Yeah, but you've got to figure out how to monetize it. Um, yeah, I and mean, if it's selling, selling it to the 
to the platforms, but again, long term monetization from that is tricky. As it, we know, it is. Yeah, I mean, look a lot because a lot of people don't know this. Like, if you sell a movie to Netflix, it's like twenty five to fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, that's it for an independent film, or they want you know worldwide rights for what two hundred grand, and then yeah, congratulations, that's it. Because once it's on Netflix, it's over. It's like over. you don't make any more. Yeah, everybody and their mothers got Netflix. Yeah, and that's what it is. What's your craziest rap party? My craziest rap party. Um, well, we had a pretty good one for Now Apocalypse. Uh, that's that, that's a stars uh, a series that's just that's going on right now actually that uh, Greg Araki uh, wrote and produced and it's it's nuts it's it's a uh, uh, it's sci-fi uh, uh, sex stuff it's it's the whole thing is what crazy. kind of sex stuff also all kind of when sex you say stuff. sex like stuff robots that really opens the door yeah does anybody fuck a robot uh, fucked by robots. Really? Ooh, there we go. Now you're yeah, talking damn. Jared's language or, or, right there. Or aliens. It's hot, it's hot. They haven't really we determined don't know who, who, the, yeah, who they yeah, who, who these, who well, these we, We've got this theory. Did you are. watch that uh, interview that Alex Jones did on Joe Rogan's show? Where no. he, he, he's It's just madness. you got to go watch it on okay. YouTube. It's, really funny. it's five hours, though, so yeah. buckle up. It, it is, okay. but <clears throat> he talks about how there's a, there's a government facility in San Francisco where we're negotiating with aliens. Yeah. Right, and our plan, or not plan really, but our idea is that somebody's got to fuck these aliens, and right, to show hybrids. dominance. Yeah. To, yeah. Okay. Like, and to ensure that our currency is always worth more. Uh huh. Yeah, because uh, otherwise, you know, alien currency, we're gonna get dicked over. Yeah, right? they're yeah, also you know. gonna think really? we're a bunch of bitches if we don't try to bang them first. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you can't. I mean, what what happens? To intergalactic war, and they're like, well, they fucked us first, so I guess there's nothing you can do. Yeah. Nothing yeah, you can do. And then we start having kids with them. And then they have the dominant genes, and there's nothing you can do with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, this rap party, how, how to get Coke? Or well, what, what's, I, what went I on don't there? know everything that was going on <laughs> there, but it was at the Palladium. And oh, all right. Yeah. Shit, that's crazy. They rented the whole Palladium? Yeah. And, and, that, and they, had, uh, they, they sort of had a, a de facto uh, 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 red carpet in front of the Palladium with, uh, with one of the alien... Or whatever it was uh, was out there, and um, and but then the security was was so huge it was um, unbelievable. I had to I had to go back around outside the Palladium to get my uh, uh, to determine that I was actually on the list, and then and then be able to go back in again. And then um, and then they screened three of the episodes. It's a 10, 10 episode uh, miniseries, and um, and then they. It was the first time I'd seen it where you had everybody had their own earphones and played whatever music you wanted to play on it. Really? Yeah. Wow. That's cool. What what uh, what are the options on something like that? Uh there I think there were four or five different ones. There was uh there was a jazz option, there was a hip hop option, there was, you know. So was everybody just walking around with headphones in there the whole time? Uh, more or less, yeah. Wow, that's wild. I went to a restaurant in Indiana once that was like that. Uh -huh. that was weird. Was it like, yeah. were there no lights? Was it one of those? Correct. Yeah. Ah. Those, so are, those are pretty rad, yeah. Yeah. So I mean, you, it's rad. Is, it's it's an experience. It, yes. It, it, it's a, it's one of those. Like, don't do it more than once, probably. Exactly. So, uh, and they were, but it was plugged into vinyl. So they were playing actual albums. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then, you know, wh whatever you ordered depended, like that determined what the music was. Yeah. Uh, for different senses. That, the, I like that. Yeah, I know you. I'm do. into it. I would take a bunch of mushrooms and then go do that. He's a big <laughs> mushroom guy, by the ah. way. I just like to hallucinate. I don't care what the drug is. Yeah. Really? Yeah. What's your favorite hallucinogen? Um, God, man, it just depends. Acid, probably. Yeah. Yeah. So if, if you were doing acid right now, would anybody know? No. You're not one of those people. Not at all. No, I mean it depends on the it depends on the mood I'm in. If I'm in a giggly mood, you're gonna because I'm so stone faced all the time. You would be able to tell that I'm altered. Gotcha. But if I was introspective or thinking about science or something, it would just be like normal because that's who I am. Is I'm a fucking weirdo nerd. So yeah, because I, I get friends who wake and bake all day. Yeah. I don't know how they. I don't know how you do that. I don't either. I, I can't. can't get anything accomplished. No. Nothing. No. You whatsoever. just want to nap and eat. Yeah. All day long, but like, dude, not I, I, work. I never knew they were high. I work with this one editor, and uh, turned out the whole entire it was four month gig and for post production on the on this uh, TV show. Turned out he was eating brownies every day, and I was just—I just thought he had a sweet tooth. Yeah, I was just like, man, this fucking dude loves to eat brownies. 
And then towards like the last week, he was just like, oh, no, I've been getting high at like all day long. Yeah. Like this is the only way I could do a job like this. And I was like, fuck. All right. Good on you. <laughs> good I don't, on I don't know if I could go marijuana edibles all day. Every no, day. never. No. Honestly. Never. I mean, I did acid every single day for a year. But I don't know yes. if I could do the edible thing is different. That's a different kind of trip. You just can't control it. There's too much body stuff going on. Yeah. You live here, L.A., full time. Yeah. Um, since they legalized weed and all that shit, is it pretty prevalent? You smell it everywhere. Every single place you go, right? Yeah. Yeah. And on, people don't care street, where they're doing it. No. No. We were at uh, Arclight the other night. Just uh, yeah. people just vaping in the yeah. out, right outside. No, right nobody outside, really yeah, cares exactly. anymore. Yeah. Strange, yeah. isn't it? It is. It is weird. Yeah, because you grew up in the '60s. I grew up in the '60s. Yeah. So, so was it like that then, where everybody was just smoking weed outside? Uh, well, yeah. Although it was illegal, you could end, you could end up you know in jail for a long time <laughs> if they got caught. But yeah, yeah. People, you know, people kind of were, were willing to do it pretty much wherever or whenever. Yeah. Yeah. Did you ever go to Woodstock or anything like that? I didn't go to Woodstock. I was actually I was doing theater at the time, and uh, and a bunch of the uh, I was doing summer stock, and a bunch of the people that I had uh, worked with that year prior to that were there, and uh, and I, so I was very disappointed that I <laughs> chose to. Yeah, yeah, but uh, no, but I remember I remember going to a party. And this was, I think this was in Seattle, and um, and there was uh, it was I knew it was I knew it was going to it was uh, uh, it, there was going to be a lot of a lot of drugs at the party, but I wasn't you know. I wasn't paying attention. I got in and was talking to people, and there was a plate of brownies. And I grabbed a brownie, you know, and I ate the brownie. I said, oh, that's pretty good. And I grabbed another brownie, ate the brownie. Uh-oh. And somebody was going by with what I thought was a plate of crudite, crudites. Do you know what that is? Yeah, carrots. Yeah. yeah. Come on, guys. What? Carrots. Yeah. I know. I just said that for Jared's sake because he doesn't know. <laughs> he doesn't know normal English words, so you, have to, you can't say words like that around ah. him. You have to tell him what it is. Well, the problem was that these were mushrooms. Ooh! Wow! And so I took a couple, and you know, and then and then was was drinking something, and all of a sudden, I remember getting into this long conversation with somebody about anthracite and uh, bitumous coal, and and then and the, <laughs> and the air was becoming like corduroy, and the <laughs> air was becoming corduroy. I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. So, what, did you freak out, or, or did you no. know it was happening? No. Then somebody else came by with a bunch of needles, and he thought it was a, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Straight yeah. to his heart. <laughs> <laughs> so you rode that evening out. I rode that evening out, but I remember I remember going out back. We were up on the top of Queen Anne Hill. I remember going out back, and there was a there was a uh, fireworks tower there. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. It's still there. Yeah, and looking up at the tower. For That's the best time. place in the city to watch the fireworks during oh, yeah. 4th of July, by the way, yeah. at Queen Anne Hill. If you're ever in Seattle for 4th of July or Independence Day or on, or on uh, New Year's or anything. Yeah, that's the, best the jam. Place. Yep. That's yeah. the jam. I've been up there just really? high as fuck. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Watching fireworks. Yep. <laughs> Enjoying himself alone. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I was with other people, but I was alone. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah I had yeah. my force field of drugs around me. Yeah. <laughs> Good thing you got that force field. Yeah, you're like a Kid Cudi video. I love it. <laughs> I love it so much, dude. Whatever's going on in your mind, Anthony, I love it so much. So I'm very here for you, much. buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Any other stories, like crazy stories that you had growing up? Oh. Jeez. Um, I, I remember. I remember floods when I, you know, when I was when I was uh, quite a bit younger, and uh, remember my sister falling out of the car one 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 day as we were driving somewhere. Uh, Your sister fell out of a moving vehicle. Yeah, this is yeah. something you you left out. How well, did she fall out of the car? She, I, I guess, she was leaning on on the door, and the and the and the, the and must have hit the door handle and just. Kind of stepped out of the, stepped out of the car, <laughs> and, and that was it. Yeah, well, it ro- yeah, she she ended up she la- ended up standing and it rolled over one of her feet, and you know did some damage, but wasn't. Oh man. Yeah. Is she alive today? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. she made it through. She made, she it. made it. She through. made it yeah. from the car. Yeah, you know? she's yeah. fine. Fell from the car. I mean, they were doing that to each other in Jackass. Oh right. yeah, for yeah. sure. <laughs> oh, let's hit each other with a car. I'm surprised you've never fallen out of a car. I haven't fallen out of a car. I've jumped out of one. 
A, mo- how, a moving vehicle? Yeah. How did fast you, were you going? About 30. Did you PLF wow. out of my car one time? PLF is parachute landing falls. So I think I feel like I was driving, and you opened the door and jumped out and did a parachute landing Poss- fall out of my I car. Mean, possibly. I mean. What happened when you jumped out of that car going 30? We had been drinking. We, so. were, we were jumping into a hill that had tall grass. Like, you're fine. Ah. You just roll. Okay. But, I mean, we were filming it for our skate video. Oh, gotcha, mm. gotcha. Yeah, you know, we got to be banned. Yeah, I- I, I thought it was going to die the other day at Matt's house with that razor. <laughs> you probably were going That to. fucking thing goes fast, But man. you can tip it really easily, and you're fucked. Oh, yeah. Because you're not wearing a seatbelt. Yeah, yeah, right. No, or no. Or a harness. No. Nothing. Nothing at all whatsoever. Yeah. There was a seatbelt in it. Yeah, but you weren't using it. No, I wasn't. <laughs> and I didn't know Homeboy was going to go that fast. And I didn't with, know how fast those things went. inexperienced drivers. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> not it, race car driver. No, it was Jeremy, the MMA guy. He had no experience in well, those, I just those mean things. In general, like most people don't know how to drive all wheel drive off road vehicles with a lot of power. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. They go super fast. Yeah. Real quick. Um, let me ask you this, Rich Hard. Yeah. Uh, what's the favorite movie that you, you've done with 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 me? With the big guy here? Um, I don't know. I'd, I'd have to say uh, Helen Keller. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Can you give me uh, Repube? Oh, what? from uh, FDR American. Were you an FDR American? Yeah. Uh, which one were you in that? I was one of the senators. In the beginning. Yeah, I, I was right. Of, yeah, you've got killed. I got killed. Yeah, because there's always a, I always oh, every sick goblins. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know it's shit goblins, right? Oh no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shit goblins. But he, I think he says sick goblins. You're one of those people that I always save something in. F- like no matter what, <laughs> in every single movie. Oh, that's great. I love that. Y- y- yeah, you're. I like. There's certain actors where you're just like, dude. I know you're going to be great no matter what. Mm. Remember in Keller, I saved all your scenes for the end of the night because right. when you start to get to the end, you don't want to go over budget. Right. You've got to save it for the best actor, and I didn't want to tell anybody else. So I was <laughs> like, dude, we've got to have Richard close out the <laughs> night, or we're fucked. Um, that like that's how good you are oh, all the time. Jesus, thanks. But yeah. 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 Uh, well, look, man. I thanks for being here. Oh, my um, pleasure. This this point in the show, we do the drinking bro of the week, okay. uh, which is somebody that inspired you or helped you come up uh, in your career. Who would you like to give the drinking bro of the week to? You know, I I would I would probably give it to Michael uh, Ironside because uh, after we did um, uh, Free Willy, uh, he kind of put pointed me in the right direction for a lot of things that otherwise wouldn't happen. And I remember one time I was, uh, I, I was complaining because I had, I, I, I had just gotten uh, uh, this heavy jacket from, uh, from the fugitive and it said the fugitive. And I said, Mike, I got all of these heavy duty clothes in the closet and I can't wear them. I, you know, can't wear them here. He says, well, I'm doing a movie in Chicago. Let me see if there's something for you. And sure enough, I get this, I get this call from the, casting director and said can you play a 75 year old man uh in the seat and you know there was no, no reason that they would bring somebody in from you know from la to, to do this do this scene in chicago but you know he had convinced the guy that he needed me to do it that's amazing yeah that's cool <laughs> uh is he still working today yeah oh yeah 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 i don't know what he's doing right now he's been doing um he did uh, a number of uh, uh, of games. Uh, a lot of people are doing that. Yeah. What's game? What's a game? Like like video games. Video games. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Like that. Like yeah. And he he had. Some, he's got a great voice. So. Oh, he's got an incredible voice. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but no, but these these are live action. Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but he also does voices. Uh, things yeah, he d- he was well. in Call the Call of Duty series, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think so. I believe it, it was either that one or Battlefield, one of the two. Yeah. And he was in Top Gun too, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he was also one of the leads. Remember that weird independent that made it on uh, Netflix that was super dark about Adventure Kid or some shit like that? Yeah. Yeah, he was yeah. in that. Yeah, he's been, in, he's been in a lot of stuff. He's been in a ton of stuff, yeah. Is he probably one of your best friends? Well, yeah. Uh, up, up until like two years ago, we, uh, we used to watch. Uh, we got together for uh, a Christmas, maybe Thanksgiving, but definitely the Super Bowl. Yeah, uh, about his place, and then and then he moved. He's he's in Newberry Park now, so we haven't we haven't gotten together in a while. But gotcha. Yeah. That's a perfect one. Perfect one. Cheers, yeah. cheers to Michael Ironside. Hell yeah, Michael yeah, Richard. Definitely. Thanks for being here, man. Thank you. Oh, my pleasure. Again, one of my favorite again. humans on this earth. 
Well, uh, and it's likewise. always great to see you. Thanks for being on Drinking. <laughs>